VanCare, we move body and mind. VanCare in-service training on Vera2 products. Vera2 B350, B450, and B600. Introduction. Mechanical lifts help make care easier on the client and less physically stressful for staff, thereby decreasing injuries that can result from transfers. The Vera Lift 2 can be used to transfer clients who require medium levels of care. Refer to the operation manual for client selection criteria. The Vera 2 B350, B450, and B600 may be used to transfer clients who weigh 350 to 600 pounds. Clients who have injuries or medical conditions that could be aggravated by the lifting procedure may not be lifted or transferred with the Vera 2. This video should be used along with the Vera 2 operation manual and hands-on training led by a manufacturer's representative or by your facility's mechanical lift trainer as part of a mechanical lift education program. The video is divided into different modules. Practice the procedures demonstrated in each module with staff members until you are comfortable and confident with your ability to operate the Vera 2 safely before using it to transfer clients. Warning: Only staff members who have been trained according to the procedures in this video by a manufacturer's representative or by your facility's mechanical lift trainer may use the Vera 2. Operating the Vera Lift 2 controls. Locking the brakes. The Vera 2 is equipped with rear caster brakes. To lock the brakes, press on the back of the brake tab. To release the brakes, press on the button on the top of the brake as shown. Adjusting the base width, manual base. The base of the Vera 2 should be open to its widest position for all transfers. The base may be narrowed to go through doorways, but must be opened after the lift has cleared the door. To adjust the width of the base, stand behind the lift, grasp the handle on the shift bar, and move the shift bar as shown. Adjusting the leg width, electric base. The same rules apply for the electric base as discussed on the manual base. To adjust the width of the base, select the buttons with the arrows pointing outward and press and hold the button in. To close the legs, use the button with the arrows pointing in. The pendant switch. The pendant switch is used to raise and lower the lift. To raise the Vera 2, press on the up arrow. To lower the lift, press on the down arrow. The pendant switch attaches to the lift with a clip or magnetic base, allowing for multiple attachment points on the lift during operation. Battery charge indicator. The battery charge indicator gauge is located on the back of the battery control box. When the battery is fully charged, four bars are shown. At 75% charge, three bars are shown. When battery is discharged, the plug symbol is shown. Note: When emergency stop button is pushed in or the lift is plugged into charge, the battery pack gauge also indicates the battery pack is discharged. Charging the batteries with built-in charger. Start by assuring the charging cord is securely plugged into the bottom of the control box. Position the lift near a wall outlet and lock the wheels. Note, locking the wheels while charging helps to prevent damage to the lift and wall outlet caused by someone moving the lift before they realize it is still plugged in. Plug the lift into the wall outlet. The yellow LED charge light and green LED on light will come on indicating the lift is charging. When the battery pack is fully charged, the yellow LED light will turn off. The battery gauge will continue to show empty until the lift is unplugged. The lift will not operate while it is plugged in. Also note that the lift will not charge if the emergency stop button is pushed in. Charging the batteries with a wall mounted charger. Remove the battery pack from the lift and place it on the wall mounted charger. The yellow LED charge light and green LED on light will come on indicating the lift is charging. When the battery pack is fully charged, the yellow LED light will turn off. Remove the charged battery from the wall charger and place it back on the lift. For more information on battery charging, refer to the operating manual. 
Emergency Lowering Switch. If the pendant switch fails during a transfer, press the emergency lowering device located on the back of the battery control box with a pin or a similar item like a key. Note this switch is for emergency use only. The lift should be taken out of service until the hand pendant is repaired or replaced. Emergency Manual Lowering Device In the unlikely event the pendant switch fails at the same time the emergency lowering switch fails, a red emergency lowering device is located on the top of the actuator motor. Pull on the device to lower the client. Note, the lift lowers very slowly. Emergency Stop Knob A red emergency stop knob is located on the back of the battery control box. If the hand control fails and the lift continues to raise or lower, push in on the emergency stop knob to stop the lift. When the problem has been corrected, turn the emergency stop knob clockwise to the right and the lift will operate. Pre-transfer procedures. Care plan. Before transferring the client, check the care plan to find out how many staff members are required, which size back belt or sitting sling, and which method of connecting the sling to the lift arm hooks is to be used. Size of back belt. Vera lift back belts come in medium and large lengths and in different widths. When transferring a client using a back belt, the back belt should be wide enough to fit from the top of the gluteal fold to two to three inches below the lower edge of the client's shoulder blades. When using the crossed strap method of transfer, the back belt should be long enough for the belt fabric to fit around the client's abdomen with sling fabric touching the client. When the correct size back belt has been determined, the information should be documented in the client care plan and the information should be communicated to the nursing staff. Size of sitting sling. When transferring a client using the sitting sling, the sling should be long enough to fit from the client's coccyx to two to three inches below the level of the shoulder blades. When the correct size sitting sling has been determined, the information should be documented on the client care plan and the information should be communicated to the nursing staff. Warning. Using a back belt or a sitting sling that is too small or too large may result in injury to the client. It is important for staff to use the correct size back belt or sitting sling when transferring clients. Refer to the back of the Vera 2 Operations Manual or contact your distributor for information about sizes and types of back belts and sitting slings that are available. Inspect the back belt. Before transferring a client, it is important to check the back belt or sling for signs of damage, for loose and missing stitching, and for tears and excessive wear that might cause it to fail. Be sure to inspect the stitching that attaches the loops to the back belt or the sling. The Velcro on the safety belt must be checked to make certain it fastens securely. Warning: Damaged or overly worn slings must not be used as their use can result in injuries to the client or staff. Inspect the lift. It is also important to inspect the lift before transferring a client to make certain no parts are missing or excessively worn and that the lift operates freely. Make sure all nuts and bolts are present, that the lift arm hooks are not worn, that the shift bar opens and closes the base of the lift properly, the casters move freely, and the brakes hold the lift securely. Warning: If a problem is noted, the lift should not be used until repairs have been made by qualified maintenance staff. Positioning the leg supports of the sitting sling. Position the leg supports by lifting the client's legs one at a time and pulling the leg supports under each leg, being sure not to twist or fold the leg supports. Connecting the back belt and sitting sling to the lift. It is important for staff to attach the back belt and sitting sling loops to the lift arm hooks with the loops on the bottom of the hooks as shown here. The sitting sling leg support loops should be securely attached to the extended bolt on the mast as shown here. Warning. If staff do not connect the loops to the hooks and extended bolt correctly, injuries can result to the client and staff. It is important for staff to double check the loop attachment to the lift before every transfer. This shows a loop caught on the top edge of the extended bolt rather than attached to the shaft of the bolt. 
pre-transfer trial run. The purpose of the trial run is to prepare the destination surface for the client and to look for obstacles to the transfer. Warning. Obstacles that obstruct the free movement of the casters of the lift can cause tipping, resulting in serious injuries to the client and staff. Also, you will determine the best path of travel for the transfer. Transfers. Transfer from bed to chair. The basic standing transfer. Two methods of connecting the back belt to the lift arm hooks can be used for transfers. Refer to the VeraLift 2 operations manual or contact your distributor for client selection criteria for each of these methods. The basic standing transfer will be shown in this demonstration. Before transferring the client, be sure to perform all pre-transfer procedures, which include checking the care plan to find out how many staff members are required, which size back belt, and which method of connecting the back belt to the lift arm hooks is to be used, perform lift and sling inspection, and do a pre-transfer trial run. Explain the procedure to the client and have the client sit on the side of the bed, helping as needed. Position the back belt behind the client with the client's arms on the outside. Fasten the safety belt snugly. Lower the lift arms and open the base of the lift to its widest position. Move the lift in front of the client. Lock the brakes. Have the client place his or her feet flat on the foot pad with knees against the knee pad, helping as needed. It is important that the client's feet are flat on the foot pad. Assist the client to hold on to the hand grips or the belt straps. Connect the white loop snugly to the lift arm hooks using the same loop on both sides of the back belt. Double check the back belt loop connection to the lift. Standing next to the client, physically and verbally cue the client to assist in standing. Lift the client to a standing position. Unlock the brakes and back the client away from the bed. Slowly turning the lift, move the client over the wheelchair. Move beside the client and lower the client until his or her buttocks are against the backrest. Unhook the back belt loops from the lift arm hooks. Back the lift away. Unfasten the safety belt and remove the back belt. Transfer from chair to bed. Standing transfer with crossed straps. The standing transfer with crossed straps will be shown in this demonstration. Before transferring a client, be sure to perform all pre-transfer procedures, which include checking the care plan to find out how many staff members are required, which size back belt and which method of connecting the back belt to the lift arm hooks is to be used, perform lift and sling inspections, and do a pre-transfer trial run. Explain the procedure to the client. Have the client bend forward, helping as needed. Place the back belt behind the client with his or her arms on the outside. Fasten the safety belt snugly. Lower the lift arms and open the base of the lift to its widest position. Move the Vera 2 in front of the client and place his or her feet flat on the foot pad with knees against the knee pad, helping as needed. Lock the brakes. Cross one back belt white strap through the loop closest to the back belt on the other white strap. Connect the white strap snugly to the lift arm hooks using the same loop on both sides of the back belt as shown here. Remove the colored straps from the pocket and connect the colored straps straight to the lift arm hooks using the same loop on both sides of the back belt. A 
assist the client to hold onto the hand grips or the colored straps when possible. Double check the back belt loop connection to the lift. Snugly fasten the knee straps behind the client's knees. Standing next to the client, physically and verbally cue the client to assist in standing. Lift the client to a standing position. Unlock the brakes and back the client away from the wheelchair. Slowly turning the lift, move the client to the desired position with his or her legs against the bed and lower the client. Unhook the back belt loops from the lift arm hooks. Unfasten the knee strap. Back the lift away. Unfasten the safety belt and remove the back belt. Sitting sling transfer from bed to chair. Before transferring the client, be sure to perform all pre-transfer procedures, which include checking the care plan to find out how many staff members are required, which size sitting sling and which method of connecting the sitting sling to the lift arm hooks and extended bolt is to be used, perform lift and sling inspection, and do a pre-trial run. Explain the procedure to the client. Position the sling behind the client. Tuck the sling behind the client's buttocks until the bottom center of the sling is over the client's coccyx. Fasten the safety belt securely. Place the leg supports under the client's legs, making sure not to twist or fold the leg supports. Open the base of the lift, move it into position, and lock the brakes. Connect the back support loops to the lift arm hooks using the same loop on both sides of the sling. Use the lift arm hooks that will position the client in an erect position. Connect the leg loops to the extended bolt on the mast using the same loop on both of the leg supports. Double check the sitting sling connection to the lift. The client about two inches off of the bed and back the lift away. Unlock the brakes, lower the client to a normal sitting position. Turning the lift slowly, move the client over the wheelchair until the client's buttocks are against the backrest, raising the client if needed so his or her buttocks will be above the level of the wheelchair seat. Do not stand the client and lower the client. Remove the sling loops from the extended bolt and from the lift arm hooks. Back the lift away. Unfasten the safety belt and remove the sling. 
Care Instructions Back Belt and Sling Care Laundry Instructions When back belts and slings are soiled or contaminated, they should be laundered with mild detergent in cold or warm water only. Do not use bleach as it can weaken the stitching and fabric. Slings may be tumble dried in the dryer on the delicate temperature cycle. If your facility's dryer does not have a delicate cycle, slings should be hung to air dry as heat will damage the padding and the slings. It is important that the nursing and laundry departments are instructed to care for the slings correctly. Monthly inspection. Monthly inspections of back belt and sitting sling. A nurse or professional rehabilitation staff member is required to inspect all Vera 2 back belts and sitting slings for signs of damage, for loose and missing stitching, and for tears and excessive wear that might cause them to fail at least monthly. Warning. If a back belt or sitting sling is damaged or overly worn, it must be replaced with an undamaged back belt or sling. Failure to do so could result in serious injury to the client or staff. A permanent record of each of these inspections and action taken should be kept by the facility. See the monthly Vera Lift Back Belt and Sling Inspection Checklist at the back of the Vera 2 Operation Manual or contact your distributor for a copy. Monthly Inspections of Vera 2 Lift Qualified maintenance staff are required to inspect all van care lifts at least monthly for missing parts and excessive wear that might cause the lift to fail. A permanent record of each of these inspections and repairs should be kept by the facility. See the monthly Vera 2 inspection checklist at the back of the Vera 2 operations manual or contact your distributor for a copy. Warning! If a lift is damaged, missing parts, or has parts that are excessively worn, it must be taken out of service until it is repaired. Failure to do so could result in injury to the client or staff. Cleaning the Vera Lift 2 When the Vera Lift 2 is soiled, it may be wiped clean with a damp sanitary wipe. Do not use bleach. The Vera Lift 2 should never be cleaned in a shower as water can damage the electronics. Damage caused by failure to follow this cleaning procedure is not covered under the warranty. Optional Equipment VanCare offers a built-in scale with all of its Series 2 floor lift models. Read your operations manual for details on how to operate the digital scale.